the guest stuff. I always sound, to me, it always sounds fine in my ear. Mm -hmm. And then I get it later. I'm like, oh my God, the guest is so much lower than me. Oh, I do a deliberate thing where I, so this is one of the things that Pete taught me. Women tend to have a higher voice. Uh -huh. um, so when I do like podcasts or anything like that, I deliberately lower my voice. Huh. Yeah. Why? So what? what's the, because of the high pitchness that you go in volume and go up in pitch? Um, no, it's just that uh, they've also done studies that men, <laughs> this is terrible, but men literally do not listen to women. <laughs> and if you lower your voice and not only do you sound more sexy because I literally get that compliment, but people like men will listen to you. Oh, so okay. it's it's really stupid, but it's a thing. That's fine. I'll lower you you down a little <laughs> bit. We'll work. No one's complained about the audio yet. So, Kid, Kid Strange, here we yeah. are for the next episode of Comedy Guy. This is not for everybody watching on the video. This is not, she hasn't committed crimes. Uh, you don't know yet. True. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. This isn't, you know, 60 minutes investigation. <laughs> We're not going to pixelate out the face or something. You just wanted to, well, the masks are for the corona. Uh, yeah, yeah and, it's no, corona. it's it's yeah. it's my uh, Frank Booth fashion. I really love David Lynch, <laughs> <laughs> hence the whole get up. Really, you know, people are looking at this like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, David Lynch. So <laughs> it's, you, a, it's a homage. Really. How are you dealing with the isolation? You all right? Uh, not really. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I actually have like, well, like I've had it before, but like I have severe anxiety, mm. and obviously. Um, I do watch the news on a regular basis, which is not helpful, but um, especially in the States and the UK and stuff, it's very frustrating because, you know, the governments are not really doing what they should be. So it's... And even yeah. though that's over there, that still makes you feel that way. Yeah, it's still right impactful here. because essentially, you know, we live in a very globalized economy. Mm. And it's not just the economy, but like with everything, you know. Um, and I have family in Canada and the UK and friends in the US. Like I have friends in Los Angeles right now. And you worry about everybody. Um, and yeah. It's, it's all right. Have you been getting, do you get out much or do you do anything? What do you do? Well, the thing is, I think it's because of my anxiety and I cannot sit down. Like I'm very restless, so I started to walk daily, and I got an exercise bike, and I think I've lost a lot of weight. It's good, good. So been, I'm gonna come out being like really thin, and everybody's gonna be really fat. Yeah, I've been doing kettlebells at home. I got myself. I found one last kettlebell, yeah. and I do that exercise. And uh, I love when uh, my fitness in Estonia turned on. They said like, "Oh, we're putting all the videos out for free," and I'm like, "Just watch a fucking English one already." Like I've I go to I've been to what jujitsu, to fitness classes, all in Estonian. I worked it out, guys. You even understand English. Yeah. Just watch it. It's yeah. fine. You'll learn. It's okay. It's an exercise yeah. video. You don't need to get nuance of the language. Yeah, I don't. There. I don't watch any. Like uh, for me, uh, I have like a lot of uh, muscle weaknesses, so I can't do like a lot of extreme, excessive kind of exercise. Mm. But I just go and walk everywhere. Good. Like I was telling you earlier, mm. when I was in Los Angeles uh, last year in October, my friends were yelling at me because <laughs> I walked from like West Hollywood to Westwood to Brentwood to Santa Monica to uh, like a uh, cult for a city. And they were like, can you stop walking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> So okay, so you yeah. get out, you go for a little walk. You've got your exercise bike, and this sort of gets you. Yeah, and then I'm hitting okay. like uh, ninety to hundred minutes of exercise, mm -hmm. and then I kind of start to feel a, a bit anorexic though, <laughs> because it's like, you know, I've got my watch, and I'm like, oh, look how I've done, and I'm breaking all these, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? <sighs> Well, I'm getting all the trophies and... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Pokemon Go or something, your number one Pokemon yeah. master and, or And now I'm like, oh my... Because I, I also do intermittent fasting. So mm. I like, I eat once a day. And now I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm anorexic. <laughs> well, it can. I do it as well. It can provoke your anorexia. But I, you know, I think you're fine given that you're eating, <laughs> yeah. you're walking, you you know, you know yeah. I, the police aren't going to get you if you're walking <laughs> on your own. I think they're going to get me today though. I'm definitely, I'm definitely in disguise. Today yeah. they're going to... Come on, you've just robbed a bank or something. Definitely, you've done. 
I actually like, thought about <laughs> why that. Why is there a British guy and a stag do here? They can't see anything about your face. That's what it looks like. Oh, that's true. <laughs> um, I actually did think about that, about how to break, like how to rob a bank. Hmm. Yeah, this is the kind of thoughts I have in my head. <laughs> how to like successfully rob a bank. Actually, there is a way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the best way is you don't need to like disguise yourself like oh, what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you can pretty much just wear like glasses, uh, darker glasses than this. Uh, write a note, wear like a big puffy coat and write a note saying, this is a stick up. I am carrying, I am like packed with bombs. Do not sound the alarm or say anything. Smile and just give me the money that's in front of you. Okay. Don't ask to go and get money somewhere else because they can put it in the blue dye pack. But essentially they will just give you the money. And then, uh, yeah. What do you do if they don't have money? They will. Every time I've been there, they've always had to walk away to take money. This is like Estonian banks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have to try. But like, that's different. You have to like go more digitally. Yeah. Yeah. But like in America, you could still do that. It doesn't like in Estonia, it doesn't work because everybody knows each other. Big rival. Is that you? What are you doing in bank? <laughs> God damn it. Shut up. I'm incognito. <laughs> Mom, I'm trying to rob a bank. <laughs> so, um, let's so let let's start with the foreigner question. Why do you come to Estonia? Because you got the heritage or something going on there, don't you? Yeah. Well, it's a really weird. Like I'm I'm in a really weird situation, even for most Estonians, because uh, so I was actually born in Tartu, um, and then. During the collapse of the Soviet Union and when we just got independent, me, my mom and my older brother, we basically left the country and were refugees in Canada. What year were you born? <laughs> I don't want to say because everybody's saying really nice things about me. <laughs> um, I'll keep that. All right. So yeah. directly after independence, though, we can piece this bit together. So you're yeah. pretty young. I was a child. As a child. And I, after independence goes and then the family takes off for Canada. Yeah. And um, so we, yeah, we came to Canada as refugees. And so I grew up in Toronto. Um, and then I lived in the UK for a bit. Uh, and then I moved back here. So it's kind of unusual because most people who are like Estonian Canadian are generational, like they're second generation ca Canadian. Their mm. grandparents came from World War II or whatever. Whereas my situation is more recent and it's kind of frustrating because people are like, oh, do you speak Estonian mm. and stuff? Like I left as a child. Do you have any memories? Uh, yeah, I do. But like also my mom is Armenian. Okay. So. We spoke Russian, like my first language was Russian. Huh. Um, and I still understand Russian, but I'm not very good at communicating in Russian. So I just use English as a default for everything. So your mom, your mom is Armenian and she was here in the Soviet days. What is, is dad, yeah. What's dad? Um, what, what uh, my dad was Estonian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Armenian and they were together and then, okay. And then and dad didn't, dad, dad's not No, he, he was, uh, by then my mom had divorced him um, and he remarried. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And so you got to Canada and then you spent some time in London, you were saying, and then, yeah. you know, here, okay, well, then we're going to try and fill out this story yeah. somewhere along the line, but I'm trying to set the scene of who is this. And so I mean, the name kid, but you go by Kaido is Kaido is actually your. Yeah. Somewhere? Because uh, in Estonia, so I'm in the process of trying to legally transition to mm -hmm. uh, change my sex for those who don't understand what that word means. Um, and like I've always felt this way. I've chosen a name that I like, but in Estonia they have name purity laws. So you can't just like choose whatever. Yeah, it has to be an Estonian name. And even if you're changing your name later. Like you. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They they want it to be Estonian. Huh. Which is fine. And I picked the most well, I picked the name Kaido because I have family in Japan and I figured it's a name that that's easily oh, yeah. pronounceable in Japan as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
if you take out the A and the O, you get kid. Sure. It's a nice nickname. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, legally, yeah, that would be what I'm trying to change it to. And I've been told it's an old person name, so it's suitable because I already have an old person name anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all right. I didn't, that, well, that's crazy. The, I mean, I got the purity laws. I kind of get it as a, as a child. It, it's a, does it strike you at all as a weird kind of government censorship almost? That I, you can't just name your kid whatever the fuck you want? Or is that too much American freedom I'm thinking of? No, actually, I agree with you. I Like, I understand why they do this because, you know, we had the occupation we had for the longest mm. time. Even, like, my grandfather. My grandfather's name was Jan. <laughs> and when the Russians came in, they're like, we don't like this. You are now Ivan. <laughs> So he, for the longest time, was called Ivan. Um, and so I can understand that kind of mentality where it's like a pushback. Mm. No, we, we want to be proud of who we are and our names. And so that's fine. But for someone like me who grew up in Canada and like all of my friends are in America, Canada, the UK, I'm very like Western orientated, right? I don't even use my legal last name. <laughs> uh, so it's, and I know that they say like, oh yeah, we, we, we will make, if you can argue that case, we will make the ex exception, but then you're basically paying a hundred euros and it's a lottery. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, I don't do lotteries. <laughs> okay. You don't gamble. That's not your thing. You don't <laughs> no, uh, exactly. I mean, it's your name, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and are you, uh, I mean, I appreciate if you don't want to say your legal surname, but are you changing that as well? I, I would like to, but I asked and I was told that it's quite difficult as well to change your surname. So it's more difficult again to change your surname. Yeah. Oh this is too much. <laughs> Jesus, Estonia, come on. Uh, but I've been using strange since like 2010. So like for a decade. Hmm. Yeah. Um, that's what I publicly go by. I don't like my last name. It's, it's nice. No, it's, it's a very nice last name. It's distinctively even more unique in Estonia because it's rare, but no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's such an interesting history that you, you grew up the Canadian influence and then the Western influence, but still the Estonian and now you're saying Armenian, Russian yeah. kind of thing. <clears throat> and I asked my mom what mm, she would have as well. named me, um, if I was born male, hmm. uh, and also a very old Armenian name. And I'm like, what is it with these old people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <young. laughs> I'm just destined to have an old person name. So I'm like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very Armenian as well. Uh, she wanted to name me after her father, uh, which is, I think is pronounced Harant. I don't. Yeah, okay, I don't and understand. that's like I'm putting a dodgy accent on it. Sorry. Yeah, no, right. that's that's fine. <laughs> Which is like Grant. Can you imagine me being called Grant? Grant, hey Grant. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're in the 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 process of transitioning. And yeah. Now that's gonna have. Uh, I mean, there's many different aspects to that. So what about what about the legal? Let's start on the legal aspects of transitioning. How does that even work? And how does it work in Estonia? In Estonia, it's a lot more difficult. No oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. In Ontario, it's the most easiest way. I just basically let the government know how I feel. And they're like, okay, great. You're that. Here, it's like hurdles. Hmm. So first, you have to get a blood test. And if you go publicly, of course, you have to wait four to six months. Um, and the blood test is to basically see your genetics. I guess they're just curious to see if there's anything wrong with you. I don't know. Uh, I went privately, and because I went privately, it was very expensive. It was 300 euros. Um, but my genetics and everything came up, and it was fine. You know, 46 chromosomes, XX, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and then afterwards, you go and see a psychiatrist who specializes in this kind of things. And so I went to see uh, him. And I said, you know, I made my, my, my plea, I guess. And I, w I was very confident in who I was. And I think he saw that as well. Because, you know, at my age, I've had the life experience as well. 
I'm not going to say my age, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get it out of you before this episode's <laughs> over. <laughs> no, like Jacob, one of our comedians, he thinks I'm 20 years old. So <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm 20. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So I made that kind of argument. And he was like, yeah, I can see who you are as a person and you know who you are. And uh, he's like, okay, well, write to me, write an email. Uh, and then we'll, I'll t let you know when the commissioner is in, because the commissioner then has to go and speak with the social minister or something to legally change. Wow. So this has got to get escalated all the way to social minister. For I this think to something like that. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I have this very frustrating um, part where it's part of my, like, I think that's why my anxiety is also kind of high because I can't. I sent the email, but obviously with the state of the emergency with the coronavirus, mm. I haven't heard anything. And that's very upsetting mm. um, because when we last spoke, he was like, you know what? You can go ahead and talk to a gynecologist for a hysterectomy because he was asking me like, how far do you want to transition? And I'm like, fully. Mm. Um, and then I realized, well, if I get a hysterectomy, I have to go on hormones. I don't want to take estrogen. <laughs> so I was writing to him like, okay, when's this commissioner coming in? When, when like the whole questions about the hysterectomy thing. And then I'm like, oh, he's not going to reply because nobody's working. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, you're in such a, a limbo right now. Yeah. These two and, worlds. and you kind of get so... it, but still like it's out of your hands. I mean, what a wow. We all think things are out of our hands. It's something's really. Yeah. And it's just hands. upsetting. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I Can I, I want to ask, because like, again, the whole premise of this podcast is I'm the dumbest motherfucker on the face of this planet. Okay, that's so fine. I'm going to ask some dumb questions. Oh, good. <laughs> what What is a hysterectomy? A hyst. Okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I told you dumb. Right? It's like, yeah, how dumb can he be? Yeah, I'm real dumb. <laughs> that's really surprising. Okay, well, a hysterectomy. <laughs> so it's basically the removal of the uterus. Mm -hmm. And when you're going, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you would do this as a woman. Uh, for some, it's uh, to do with, okay, so uh, mm -hmm. I have to backtrack now. I feel like this is going to be like the world history. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, we live in a society where medical science does not focus on a lot of illnesses that are common in women. And so women do get a lot of, Horrible diseases that deal with their uterus, um, ovaries, and so on. And that's not necessarily cancer. It's a variety of things. So a hysterectomy is in order. And um, also when you're transitioning female to male and you want to get bottom surgery, uh, first step is hysterectomy. And when you are finish the hysterectomy, they give you hormones to regulate. Um, so obviously if for other reasons you get estrogen and then if you're transitioning, you carry on with your testosterone. Okay. So you're going to get testosterone is the yeah. hormone, but you said you don't want hormones. Sorry. Did you say I don't that? want estrogen. You don't want estrogen, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. We don't want it because that would right afterwards. So we, we want that. Okay. Yeah. So that helps by taking out the uterus. Yeah. Uh, we can't give you testosterone until we take out the uterus or something. No, you could. Work. You can you can take you can mm -hmm. start doing it right now. Yeah. Um, it's just that normally, if if they don't know the situation, they will just give you estrogen. And okay. I don't want to take right, it. right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they're gonna be like, okay, yep, normal woman in uterus out, estrogen in. You're yeah. like, no, no, not that last bit. Okay, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, now that that makes sense. So okay, so this is still in limbo right now, and you can't. I mean, we want to tell that you can't just what tell the doctor, no, 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 on the estrogen, you've got it like it's got to be legal, and yeah, otherwise they legally you're gonna exactly. have to give you estrogen. Okay. Yeah, mm. they don't. Yeah, there's nothing they can do. Even though I I went to see a therapist and he was like, yeah, you know who you are for certain. Sure. Yeah. But the, the doctor would have I don't know some duty of care or some bullshit. Yeah. That says he's got to treat it this way. He can't treat you that way because of your legal gender. Mm -hmm. Wow, so many overheads to go through. So that's stuck in that process. So mm. when the whoever the isn't that Tilk Tunnel? Is that Tunnel Tilk? The dude who looks like he should be in a '90s indie <laughs> band from London. Doesn't he look like he's from he Supergrass? He's really adorable. Yeah, he's got the curly hair. Yeah. So we got to wait for Tunnel to 
I, I really want, like, I really think he's in a rock band, like, I've secretly. I've been caught stealing <laughs> once when I was <laughs> Just waiting for him to start singing, all right. <laughs> we are young. <laughs> yes. You're the first person who's got that reference when I thought it up. Thankfully, I realized just now, you will you know that reference. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so we got to do that. And then uh, is it just, and so once we get the rubber stamp from Donal, it's the, you know, then you can begin this process, the hysterectomy. Yeah. And then it's, what, is it just, I mean, what, what happens else? Is it just testosterone well, they start pumping you with? You start looking yeah, like Joe so Rogan in the end? how it usually begins is you start taking hormones. Mm -hmm. um, and you take hormones, uh, depending on what's like sex to other sex you're going to. So if you're, uh, my situation, female to male, uh, you take hormones and uh, basically what happens is I've been told you get a lot of energy because it's testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, power tools. Um, <laughs> and you get handed an angle grinder. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to remodel my house. <laughs> like comedy Estonia, just be like remodeling my house, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I made a hole. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, um, and so you lose a lot of fat, body fat, because mm -hmm. women tend to carry more because, you know, we need to make babies. Uh, and and uh, so you lose a lot of body fat. Uh, your facial features and other things become like you, you, you build more muscle, but you also like your face becomes a little bit more masculine, mm. uh, body hair, facial hair. Uh, you also run the risk of male patent baldness, sure. which is fantastic. Uh, luckily, I'm Armenian. Okay, so you're going to be dark head selling kebabs within two weeks. Hey, Matthew, what's up? Kebab? Come on, no problem. Kid, is that you? <laughs> Shush licks. <laughs> um, yeah, and... Um, and then uh, about a year or two, uh, you get a mastectomy, which is top surgery. Uh, okay. And you, yeah, you right. remove the breasts. And then, uh, yeah, at some point you can start to also get the hyster hysterectomy because that's the process of getting bottom surgery. Now, bottom surgery is a little mm. bit more complicated. <laughs> bottom surgery. Yeah, that's what we call for when we want to get a dick. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yeah. how do we actually make a... We've got an innie, and how do we make an outie? <laughs> so here's an interesting thing, as I had to do my own research and find all of these things out. Um, so when you're taking testosterone, the clitoris grows. Okay. Yeah. Is it true? Is the clitoris a little dick? Is that true? Yes. Oh. That's the lady's dick. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, BCE, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to start saying that now. So, because that's where basically it's the stimulation. Oh my God, now it's sex. Uh, I feel like I'm Dr. Ruth yeah, now. Yeah, now you're giving me sex ed class. I'm like, that's why. I, oh my God, am I gay? Because I like licking my girlfriend's clit. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm a fuck. You're, <laughs> you're so gay. Um, <laughs> so, because that's where the stimulation uh, comes from, uh, it will grow. And then when you get, um, I think it's called fall fallacy, F fallas. Oh my God. I, oops. Anyway. Something, yeah. Um, you basically, first you have to get a skin graft for your shaft huh, and okay. fake testicles. The testicles are obviously fake because you're not going to produce sperm. Um, mm. yay, no babies. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so... To get the skin graft is a variety of areas. So, and then, and then also like depending on what area you get it is depending how sensitive it is. So, uh, you can get it from. I should just show it on the camera there. Um, the upper arm of your. Okay, forearm. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah, the sure. the forearm or like the inner thigh. Oh. That's the most sensitive. So, like, sex will be like very wow. But I considered my back because that's like a strong, hearty penis. 
this is how I read and understand what I read. Like, it's cool. You clearly need to be a man. Like, yeah. Clearly, this is what I've determined already from this conversation. No need to be hard one. I don't give a shit how I feel with a rock hard cock. That's yeah. okay, madam. Yeah. Yes, you're allowed him to be a man. Yeah. But it's less sensitive. And yeah. I'm like, okay, well. Um, and then... Well, I just heard like basically from the back, it might be a little bit better because it's uh, if you get it from like inner thigh or like your forearm or whatever, it's sensitive, but it also isn't as sturdy or whatever. Mm, okay. And so my, my the other problem is that uh, after the surgery, you run the risk or the likelihood that your body might reject the skin graft. So it's it's not an easy procedure. And then, of course, you have like at least two months where you have to have a catheter because you can't pee, mm-hmm. which is not... Okay, yeah, no one yeah. wants this. You're no, right. yeah. <laughs> if you've never had a dick, let me tell you, you don't want nothing shoved up that thing. <laughs> I, I know, I know. <laughs> let me just say I don't have a dick and I don't want anything shoved up me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... That's what I have to look forward to. Oh, I yeah. Um, I'll go a little bit longer on this because I feel like these are the good bits. Like <laughs> you essentially, like we're creating a dick. And yeah. for a guy, this is like, because the dick for, for me is this magical wand that has always existed and you know has my hopes and fears and dreams all tied up emotionally inside of it. Right. Well, the reason why I, bl- I brought up the clitoris thing was because when it gets lo- long, uh, when they graft it, they graft it over the penis so that you actually feel, uh, essentially you, you use the penis like a guy would mm-hmm. and that you can get an erection and get turned on and that you can, yeah, wanking motions so that's that people amazing. understand. I mean, that that's just yeah. such a marvel of modern medicine. They mm. can actually make a penis for you. Uh, yeah. Like just as you want. A functioning want, yeah, penis. A functioning penis that when you get aroused, it gets out and you pee through it eventually exactly wow yeah that um oh do you get to choose how big it is i mean come on everyone wants to know everyone asks me this like i was hanging out in san jose (laughs) in a gay club and i met some really lovely guys literally they were asking me and then like they were just so excited (laughs) (gasps) <gasps> it's gotta be this big. Can I can I get some skin from my black friend? <laughs> like I'm not gonna be like the next John Holmes, you know. Oh. I'm not gonna be like, hey, let me just lasso you over here with my big fucking dick. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like having to explain to people, like, no, it's gonna be probably modest. <laughs> sure. It's a fucking DIY dick. I mean, what are we expecting here? Like, this is already a marvel of science and an amazing thing that you can have that and this is what you you need and what you want and it's already an amazing thing. I know with Caleb, he was like, let's okay. talk about girth. I'm like, oh my God, let's not. <laughs> so all of these these changes that are going on, um, you, you spoke of, we're going to get the donger, we're going to have... We're going to remove the breasts. We're going to get ha- facial hair. We might lose hair. Uh, we have hair on our bodies. I don't yeah. know. Maybe facial hair. Who knows? Maybe we're going to lose hair. The voice gets deep. Voice is going to go deep. Mm. These things are happening to you. And this, in your mind and who you are, you feel like this is what I, I connect with. Yeah. This is what I feel like is proper that should be there. Mm. Yeah. Huh. It's, is there something that medical science can't help you with, but you still have some longing or wish that you oh, could? God, yeah. Mental help health. With? Okay, <laughs> mental health, sure. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Notwithstanding the the brain, which is something I guess we got to get to later. Is there something physical? Like, because you said, you, I mean, you connect when you maybe, I, I don't know, I'm maybe guessing that you one day sprout some hair on your chest and mm. that gives you some sense of, I don't know, wellness or satisfaction or mm. some level of completeness. Um, is there anything that physical, that medical science won't fix for you? That I you wish I wish? was a little bit taller. Okay. <laughs> I found out I was like Michael Bloomberg height and I'm like, God fucking damn it. 
Michael Bloomberg. That's an odd person to choose whose height it is. Like, I know, but everybody makes fun of him because he's so, so short. And I'm like, okay. Well, technically, he's probably shorter now because he's an old man. But yeah. still, I'm very like, oh, damn it. Just, okay, just, so the physical just height. a little bit, yeah. Sure. How, um, how long do you expect this? As soon as we get Tanal's sign off and let's say we can move <laughs> at a reasonable pace of operations or whatever needs to be done. I was really hoping, obviously now it's not going to be anytime soon. Um, because the thing is like when they change my sex, they have to change my SEC code, which is like a social. Oh, your ID here. number gets changed. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, um, the first digit is, uh, your gender. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and what century you were born in. Oh. Um, what century am I living in? Okay. Yeah. But, okay. But what about like just notwithstanding the legalities? Sorry, pardon me. Notwithstanding the legalities, just of the physical <laughs> yeah. the changes to your body. How long is this process? I was really hoping for um, basically I would start this year and by next year, like some point in May or June, I could have my top surgery mm -hmm. at least. Um, now it looks like we're even pushing it further. So, oh, okay, considering the, the situation, but, yeah, but go to woe if things were good, then we look at like a year and a half, yeah, of, of treatment to yeah. get to where you feel like it's a satisfactory yeah. situation for you, okay, huh? Um, to kind of sidestep it again, I mean, you're now living in Estonia, mm -hmm. have you ever thought like? Shit, if I was just in Canada, this would be like 10 times. Oh, easier. all the time. Yeah. Just not even Canada, the UK, America, anywhere. Like people are just, they're a little bit, well, it's it's kind of difficult because like on the one hand, it's not that simple. Like, okay, I got all these hurdles and stuff, but you're still dealing with transphobia. Mm. And that's the other side of it. And that doesn't help my anxiety mm. <laughs> or depression. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but in America, for example, uh, last year was the highest on record for, uh, particularly trans women and women of color, uh, deaths by other people, like homicidal deaths. Right. Um, and then hate, hate crime deaths. Yeah. And then also, you know, the suicide factor in the LGBTQ community is a lot higher so it's like you know you could go to canada and american whatever and, and have that easier solution but then you still have that other aspect so what then i mean respect to the country that i live in and i intend on living in a long time i'm not sure estonia has ever been a champion of gay and no. lesbian rights however no. so you no. but you still feel that is it just because you're so so few people in your situation in Estonia that mm. it's easier for you to fly under the radar. Yeah, that's well, well, that and also, um, you know, I think a lot of people are kind of surprised when I tell them. I haven't told my mom actually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my listen, a lot okay. of my family members know, but my mom, no. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but. And like, yeah, they're, they're generally surprised, huh. but I think that overall they're like, well, I think I can live with it. So I kind of see that. I see that like people are like, we don't understand this, but I think I can live with it, which is nice. Um, it's not the best solution. Obviously, when you're telling somebody uh, like acquaintance or whatever, oh, by the way, and their face is like, yeah, right. you're like, what? Um, it's not the best reaction, but it's... Was there more people giving you... How is... While you might say as a society, uh, United Kingdom or Canada has these greater problems because um, transitioning people are more public and, and more out there, so that is then producing more reaction back from the conservative parts of society. Mm. Fuck, what was my question before I went on with it? Um, Oh, I don't know what my question was. Uh, <laughs> that uh, no, I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I'm just trying to gauge. This is very interesting that you would because we kind of firstly assume that oh, okay, small Eastern European, da da da. This is not a great 
place, but then you, you, it's easier for you to go. So I guess, hmm. It's kind um, of a really weird country because I think a lot of things here are easier to do and manageable. Like mm. even, for example, the comedy situation. So, yeah. I mean, in, in Canada and the States, you know how hard it is to just, like in the big city, do comedy because, you know, open mic is yeah, yeah. hard. <clears throat> but here, you you manage to do that you know, to make that situation where everybody can, can try it out. So it's a lot easier to do it here. And that's what I mean. Like it's, okay, so it's, I mean, it's kind of a weird place, but it's just easier to do things here. Sure. Let's compare uh, transitioning to developing a stand-up comedy scene. Yeah. Yes. 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 Is it equal? yes. <laughs> Here's some apples to apples for sure. <laughs> but I mean, we were able to do that like many things in Estonia because we were the first ones to really give it a go yeah so for okay do you know is what are the statistics on how many people in estonia do this um, every year i well i actually the person i went to because i went to the lgbt community here uh they they know me very well and so i asked that's how i learned about all this information and i'm talking to a guy who's also transitioned here mm -hmm. and uh, he's kind of been a really big help uh so and uh, He's already done it, and I think there's a handful, like literally a couple of trans women in Estonia. Okay. So it is a thing that exists. Right. It's a thing that exists, but it's not even like really numbers per year. It's yeah. just total. I mean, when you said, sorry, and again, pardon my ignorance, when you said a guy, did he transition to a guy or was Yes, transition to. We speak about what their current gender yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. And okay, he was just helpful in um, making me take the steps to get to where I need to. And, I, you know, I think it's also just out of fear. Sure. Uh, you talk to, especially a lot of the younger people who come from small cities here or small towns, not cities. <laughs> the Estonians think it's a city. Mm -hmm. um, and they just tell you about the homophobia, the transphobia and stuff like that. So there's a lot of fear. Um, so in a way, you know, me being a comic in Estonia, me being open and transgender, that can maybe help other Estonians come to terms with it and especially young people. I think it's a very good thing. Yeah. I think it's great that you're, as much as you, you, you would like to, of course, that you're willing to talk about it, humor is a great function for that. And I do believe in the, the, there is an element of comedy. Yeah, comedy is just about saying stupid things and making jokes, absolutely. Mm. But yeah. there is also room in there to make a message. Mm as well um i think uh, i often I've, I've said a lot that i believe that estonian racism mm -hmm. comes is at a different place because in australia uh racism is we invaded their country we oppressed their people for 200 years or so we told them they were terrible we and that's why they're um, they're disadvantaged as people and that's where a lot of the direct, you know, it's like standing in front of them going, you're terrible. Mm. Estonian racism is just like, I ain't never seen a black guy before. It's, yeah. Now this is not better, absolutely not, but it's like because it comes from a different place, I think you have to approach it in a different way as a society. Mm. Clearly the way Estonia deals with racism is going to be different to the way Australia deals with racism. Yeah. and um, Do you feel that there could be something in that as well with the way Estonia is going to have to deal with that compared to how it might be more... It's exactly current. like that, huh. actually, when it comes to being gay and trans. Because um, I, I remember I was at a party and I was coming out to a lot of my friends and they didn't know what anything was. Here? Here in yeah, Estonia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're like, you need to do a TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Estonia style. <laughs> You gotta make a startup for that. Okay, you get some funding, you'll start the bank account, I know how to do it. TED Talk. They're literally like, you need to do a TED Talk about what it means, how, <laughs> like the process of transitioning. And I'm like, go online. Like, holy shit, the, the internet exists. <laughs> um, but they're like, no, but you have to do it in Estonia so people understand what this but is. It's the same thing as the fuck of my fitness. They want their fitness videos in Estonian. They want to hear from someone who's here. It's not good enough to hear. And look, maybe I can sense some sense of truth and reality in that, that it's easy to relate to somebody who's nearby yeah. than someone who's far away, particularly from a small country. Maybe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, it's so dumb. Like, okay. <laughs> but yeah. Um, How do you feel about that? 
how far do you think you'll take that? I mean, on one hand, yes, you would like to educate, but you know, is it your job to be the social champion of this cause? You know, you know, this is a very great question because this is something I talk with a lot of my friends and always a back and forth kind of ping pong discussion. Like, is it my job to inform the public about this and to be that sort of um, pioneer for other Estonians who want to transition? Mm. Or can I take the easier out and just like bail, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like, because it's not really my job. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, e easy is one. Already, you've put an influence on it. Like, oh, easy way. Like, no. Like, you're just a person living your life. Yeah. Yeah. Go exactly. Yeah. And I think it's the individual. I think that when it comes to each individual, yeah, they don't own. Like for me, I don't think anybody owns anybody anything. I truly believe that. To me, I care a lot about people. But my problem is I'm hypersensitive. Like, that's why the severe anxiety this, this whole time with the coronavirus is through the roof because I'm worried about refugees, the homeless, people stuck in domestic violence abuse. People I've never fucking met, but I'm so fucking worried about them. You know, like, this is how my brain works. So that, like, for me, I'm in that kind of mentality where I do care about other people. So if that's what it, people think about me or how they see me fine right <laughs> but i yeah in the back of my mind i have to remind myself like yeah i don't own people anything though mm. so that's such a dilemma <laughs> yeah it's a dilemma and a duality there that you both owe nothing to them but you also do seem to care but then you're scared or have the scared part of me is the wrong word so you feel anxious and concerned to yeah. then go out into public in this yeah uh would this yeah ma maybe if you just did your thing did you transition, live your life, no one would fucking notice, maybe. Yeah. But then... I feel like I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> if you get out there and say something, maybe actually you do attract negative attention. Yeah. And that's not a reason for staying inward, not at all. But, you know, you've got to change a cause. We yeah. don't have to, you know, that that's the whole... It mm. wouldn't be a cause to change if there wasn't some controversy to make. Precisely. Oh. I feel like, you know, the more I think about actually transitioning and then having the body I want, the more I feel happier. Hmm, that's but, nice. Um, even once my friend uh, ordered a book for me and she used my proper name, not my dead name. Um, and of course it was hard because, you know, when you go to the post office, you have to show your ID and shit. Mm -hmm. And they're like, who the fuck is this person? And you're like, no, that's, that's me. But I will say how happy that made me. Like, it's it's like the most basic thing, but it just made me so happy. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that it's even that that story the because it it produces an emotion in you that touches you to the core, mm. and I think that's the difficulty that the civilians like myself, as much as we can, you know, listen to your cause and say that sounds good idea and you should do what you want to do and, and all of that um that raw and deep emotion that you just felt of mm. knowing that's the bit that we can't get knowing mm. that how does it feel to not feel right in your own skin mm. and i think that intellectually we can get it but emotionally yeah that's the tough part we'll never understand because of course we're not going through it yeah exactly so and i'm still the same person it's just that my body will finally match my personality. So, yeah. You say that, you've got a friggin' onesie with a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> Just next time I'm going to have fucking power tools. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I'm going to put the, I'll make sure the episode picture is us, like both of us, so people can see what it is I'm talking about. If you're watching the, t if you're watching the, go to the, com the Comedy Guy YouTube channel and you'll be able to see us. What we're doing, we're just having fun as well. This is serious <laughs> stuff, but we're having fun um, as well. You gotta keep it light. You gotta yeah. keep it light. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I really, I didn't get any water for us. I'm a bit thirsty with yeah. these things on. Let's take a few minutes and do you need okay. to go to Lou or anything? Uh, no, but I will have some water. I'll I can do a fun ad. Do I, you, I, yeah, you, have, you can feel yeah. free to talk because you know how like podcasts are like, hey, 
Talk to, talk to the listeners. Yeah. This, uh, this podcast is brought, brought to you by severe anxiety. Because fuck you, that's why. It's also brought to you by concrete. This Mother's Day, buy your mother some concrete. Um, <laughs> totally bail, bail. Um, all right, another. <laughs> this is like, uh, oh my God, I'm going to use a reference that nobody will understand. So Wayne's World. When Wayne was like, he got fired from his job and Garth's like, oh no, what am I going to do? <laughs> this is that moment now where you're like seeming me, seeing me panic because it's like, oh great, now I got to talk to myself. Um, I guess I can do one more ad. Cacti warmers. They're for your cacti, not your penis. Available on Amazon. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, now you'll you'll play that. You'll be like, "What the fuck?" I, I did a Wayne's World reference, so I hope you you the understand. Go, yeah, we got a little water Gu guaranteed corona free water, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm like, how are we gonna? <laughs> it's mm. not working, you guys. You're gonna pour it through the mask. <laughs> uh, the mask that I have on that you you see me wearing, and I also wore in the last episode with Dogma. I actually got these masks from Kid. Um, you were very kind. I actually brought you a gray one in like this color as well. Just if you want to mix it up. Oh, it's fine. I mean, I only need one. I'm trying not to use too much. Okay, okay. yeah. Okay. One to me, one to my girlfriend, one to Tim Reedy. Oh, okay. God knows he's going to get the corona any day now. He yeah. was still... That motherfucker was still at Baltiar Markets buying Italian ham from the cellar. Even like in the last days, the Baltiar was open. Couldn't buy anything else down there. Everyone has a mask on except him and the Italian guy selling him ham. I'm like, okay, you got mm. Corona. Yeah, I I <laughs> literally had to go last day as well because I have animals. So I'm like stocking on all the pet food. <laughs> like I bought, uh, cause you know when they were like the toilet roll issue. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I literally went to the shops. I was with the Jacob and I bought one pack roll of 24 mm -hmm. and i did the maths and i realized that's gonna last me for an entire year yeah shit yeah because <laughs> like again like intermittent fasting i barely eat <laughs> yeah i so. bought a bunch i had at my peak i had 45 rolls wow which is yeah I'm not that's going, gonna be like two years yeah, at i'm least. not going through a roll well you know then again I, as you know a biological man i'm pooping Okay, yeah, okay. I got, I got shit. I'll, I'll probably be pooping it's as coming. well. Exactly, yeah. you got to factor this in, okay? <laughs> we got to learn these lessons. There's going to be a lot more. I'll send you I'll send you some toilet rolls as a transition <laughs> gift. <laughs> I'll throw a party. <laughs> Just people getting me man things. Like, yeah. here's more toilet roll, okay. So we got the, the mask. It's a nice sunny day outside. I like that the weather's getting a little better. Yeah, well, yesterday was really weird. Mm, that was it was i really like it when you look at the weather app and they describe it as a wintry mix it sounds like muesli you <laughs> know they, what do, they mean? <laughs> do you have wintry mix, wintry mix. <laughs> um the thing and the the, the re another re not only i mean the reason that you're here is not only is this story amazing and to hear <laughs> about the story of who you are and who you know who you are and who you're going to be in many ways this is not even like one of the most interesting things in your life you have so yeah. many this is not even the end of it <laughs> um I, I think i want to trace it back i mean to your late husband yeah and how you met and yeah where this goes because this is the the other one that's just like wow cool i gotta like hear this story this is mm -hmm. a great story and that's why you're here to tell these fascinating things about your life mm. um I, I look because i actually don't really know that's why i'm here asking as well where do we trace this back where can we start this story? well i think where are you I, living, I met I pete here? when i was like 18 years old okay so at least two decades well not two days de a, a decade and a half <laughs> well see now again see I'm, I'm closing in on the age right i'm like i'm clever i'm clever as shit possibly give us a time right. um okay so you i mean i guess to tell the end of the story first you were married to a guy he's yes. now passed away yes so you're a widow 
Yeah, widower, I widow. guess. Widower, widow, yeah. Yeah, widower. because uh, oh, apparently yeah, it's gendered, huh? Which is really dumb, huh? But yeah. then it's based off your current gender, not the gender you were when the event was happening. Yeah. Oh my god, yo yo, too much. Well, I did come out to him as well, so he knew. Sure, I, yeah. I would imagine <laughs> this is all. So, and he's passed away. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, set the scene. You said you're 18 or thereabouts. Let's say, yeah. where are you living at the time? I was living in Toronto, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Um, I took my sweet ass time in high school. <laughs> this shows that I'm like that idiot as well. Um, mm. No, I didn't like school. I, I still kind of, I, okay, not just school. I have a hard time with society in general. So obviously any kind of formal structure, it's very difficult for me. Um, so yeah, I was still in high school. Um, extra year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I met Pete. Well, first I met him online and stuff, and then we kind of just became friends, and from that, it just sort of, you know, escalated, I guess. Not escalated. I don't know. Sure, I mean, things Whatever, we're lack yeah. of words here. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no, it's all right. I know, and I appreciate it. Sorry that, you know, if I start digging around sensitive topics as well, you know. Uh, no, is... it's it's fine. It's It's just that, like, for me, I'm... You know, I was talking to Daniel um, about this as well, uh, Vinesburg, because mm -hmm. uh, he was interested as well, and he interviewed me for Delphi. <laughs> but uh, for me, I'm one of those people who I will literally drop everything and like follow my heart and go for it. And I'm also one of those people who I will like, I will, in terms of dates or love interest i will literally find somebody from the fucking forest and bring them back and be like oh you followed <laughs> me home so i'm that kind of person basically where people like you don't seem to have these stereotypes or ideas about who yeah the person you fall for is it really could yeah that's a great it's so rare i'm a romantic at heart honestly <laughs> um and so was pete i think that's why we kind of just worked um, and then, yeah, we started seeing each other and then I graduated high school and I went to bougie bullshit school. That's what my friend calls art school. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to bougie bullshit school. I went to actually, uh, Ontario college of art and design. What did you study there? Um, well, it's just the art or what? Like, well, I actually wanted to go into printmaking, but uh, in America they do four years. So the first year is foundation, um, and then you get to choose your major and your minor. And so I was gonna do printmaking as a major, and then I wanted to do minor in illustration. Um, and the reason why I bring up Ontario College of Art and Design is that yes, it's that hideous building on the cover of. Why the heck would you build that? <laughs> that's the building. That's the school I went to. What's, what's why the heck you would build that? I don't know. That's an actual book. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I'm and on the cover of it terrible is that hideous, text. ugly thing. Okay. <laughs> My friends call it uh, the the blue cheese on stilts building. Um, just Google it. You okay. know, just Google it. And you'll be like, wow, that's hideous. And it's great because a lot of movies are made in Toronto. And I was watching TV because my, my TV, I have uh, like a, you know, Italia TV box. I know I'm very old fashioned, but I, I grew up with TV. So she, TV is my mom and I only watch cartoons or movies. And uh, the movie Chloe was on, which was filmed in Toronto. <laughs> and of course, there's like all these scenes where you see like all these famous people like julianne moore you know walking by this hideous fucking building you're like oh, <laughs> that's your art school <laughs> exactly you're like oh god <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> why'd you film this hideous thing <laughs> of all the places in toronto um did you make it through art school no 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 after like the <laughs> first year i like i really hated art school um structures again is it the institutional um it wasn't it wasn't I mean, you could say that, but it was just, yeah, I mean, I had like one teacher that I really liked and I'm actually still friends with him and I still talk to him. Uh, he was the drawing teacher, <laughs> um, but I really hated it. And because it was for me, my aspect of like post-secondary education is teach me 
techniques and things that is going to be handy to me in my work. Mm. But in bougie bullshit school, <laughs> it's how to be creative. Okay. And I'm like, well, I already fucking know. That's why I'm fucking here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I didn't particularly like a lot of the classes. I like the classes where you get to read books and philosophy and stuff like that. That was great because that's part of art, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, in terms of like painting, drawing and stuff. And, and it was really funny because at the time I was also taking a workshop at a private school. It was a private school for animation. And in the workshop, I learned uh, about perspective. And in my first year, when I had to, because we had to critique each other's work as well, nobody fucking understood perspective. Every, everybody's perspective was so off. And I'm like, mm. oh my God. Who are these idiots? <laughs> and like, this is the things we should be fucking learning, because <laughs> obviously nobody understands how any of this works. So, so um, at this time, you're dating pete or let's yeah, say yeah i was dating time. but like we had been at that point we've been together for a long time and mm. he was like well you're not enjoying yourself only clearly it's like why don't you just come to london and live with me and actually fun fact i was not estonian at the time i was just canadian oh you didn't have a citizenship or a residency or something yeah like actually that. like when i came to canada i was stateless I didn't become a citizen of anything until I was 16 years old oh, on my birthday, on my 16th birthday. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you went all that time as a teenager not being a Canadian citizen or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. Huh. I was a refugee. I was stateless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was really great because like I had fantasies of like running away from home because mm. my family is kind of very dysfunctional. <laughs> and like, where are you going to go to? Hamilton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like you couldn't exactly go anywhere. Um, so yeah, I became a Canadian on my 16th birthday, exactly on my 16th birthday. Uh, and so now the prospect of like moving over to London and getting married and all of these things. And mm. uh, we had to start looking up that because I was Canadian. And Estonia was by then part of the EU for a while quite a while um no like a, a, a decent while <laughs> and uh i basically so how it worked was basically if you're not in the eu you have to spot pay for a sponsor visa and then once you get married you have to buy another visa which in total was like over a thousand pounds it was really expensive and stupid so pete was like go and talk to the Estonian embassy and see if you can get Estonian citizenship. Uh, okay. And so I explained my situation. They were like, actually, by birthright, you're Estonian. Yeah. So they granted me this Estonian citizenship and yeah. So that allowed you to live in the United Kingdom and made that whole process much yeah. simpler. Yeah, I didn't have to get a visa. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you, so Pete invites you over to the UK yeah. and you go there and... Uh, do, you, yeah. do you live together straight away? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, obviously. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's been a while. You've been yeah. together for some time. Um, I'm trying to, like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess you, you said you, you guys met online. It was just you, you, you started talking about music. I mean, what yeah, the, it was like the, the buzzcock what? stuff and everything mm. like that. Okay, so in, in case people don't know, sure, so, yeah, let's yeah, set it up. Yeah, I, was yeah, yeah. I was deliberately holding back this fact in case someone didn't know to sort of set yeah, the scene. So first. Uh, tell us who my husband, yeah, husband was, was lead singer of buzzcocks. Yeah. yeah, so extremely influential punk band. From, from the, the 70s, 70s yeah and i mean all yeah. up until today like an extremely well-known figure yeah respected if you know your music and you know that era yeah you know exactly who pete is what was his surname again <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm the real expert sorry but pete was uh shelly shelly peter shelly uh what did he play in the buzzcocks who's guitar the, he's the guitarist in the buzzcocks and vocals yeah sure and so he's this hugely influential, I mean, a great musician, a great artist, hugely mm. influential on a whole generation of punk and guitarists as mm. well. Yeah. And and that's another part of the, not only is this a beautiful story, but this is also what makes this. <laughs> I know, I have too. such a fucking weird life. It's great. It's fantastic. 
how many levels there are to this. <laughs> and I guess the thing that like, let's, okay, let's not beat around the bush. Okay. All right. Let's lay it out for the people. When you guys met, when you were 18, mm -hmm. how old was Pete? He was 30, well, he, he was 32 years older than me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is great because like I'm 32. I will be 33 this year, but I'm 32. And my friend pointed out, whoever's being born right now is going to be your next love interest. And I was like, <laughs> fuck you <laughs> for fucking saying that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Pete is 32 years older than you yeah. at the time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I'm we I know what I I've come to the terms that I'm very weird and I just don't care. It's all right. I yeah. mean I'm not he did, no one didn't like, say anything bad about it. Yeah, like my, right now my celebrity crush is literally twenty years older than me, so I don't I do I do not care. Sure. I just do not care. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah. Um but by then I was like uh twenty two, twenty three. Mm. I, when we got married, I was, I think, 23. Yeah. Okay. Today is actually our, our wedding anniversary. No shit today? Yeah. It's fucking, I know. Yesterday was Trans Visibility Day. Today is the anniversary. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's perfect timing, right? Okay. I mean, you're doing great, I must say. Like, for many other people, <laughs> this might bring back, you know, different emotions, but that you're able to talk so openly and yeah. be cool about this. It's really nice. Thanks. Yeah. Like, I'm a very uh, candid, open, and sincere person, yeah. so I just I I don't hide anything. <laughs> okay, what would have been the the wedding anniversary? How many years? Uh, if he was still alive, it would have been nine years today. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's nice. It's really okay. Mm. So. Um, the art school's not working out for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, tere turmas, minola nesti. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. You get the thing. So, you go yeah. to the UK. Yeah. And then you move to the United Kingdom and you, yeah, you, you yes. guys start living in. Now is Pete at this stage, what, what's he doing in his career at this stage? No, no, no. Like Buscox since even till right up to his death. I mean, they still are performing to be fair. Yeah. To, right. They're Buscox. performing. They're making music. They're yeah. still active. As yeah. One yeah. Thing they're there. very active. And like, I, I don't want to say like they're not active now. They still are. Obviously uh, they're, the shows that were upcoming in mm. May have been postponed. <laughs> um, so they're still ongoing. Um, so yeah, but when I met him, that, that's, you know, I, I did all the tours and everything as well. Rock and roll. Yeah, right. You were there. You were there doing shows. I mean, what, staying backstage? Yeah, and, uh, all of it. Where did you, what countries or was it just the United Kingdom or do you go oh, to Oh, no, everywhere. Like, I, I say everywhere, but like, yeah, a lot of places. I've been to China. Huh. Um, Shit. So the Buzzcocks were in China? Yeah. How many people do they do a gig for in China? Uh, it was very weird. It was, it was very underground. Which was great. Which is great. Back yeah. to the fucking real thing. Again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was like, you know, a young crowd, very crazy. And the people who were backstage were like basically radio and news reporters and stuff. So it was kind of really weird because they, they were talking about what's life in China as Westerners and everything like that. And it was like, well, this is so fucking weird. Yeah. Um, but China, we did shows there. I say we. Okay. So when I say we, I mean they, <laughs> but I was with them. It's all right. You're married. You're a part of the team. It's okay. Like that's. Uh, I have just, to like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I really like doing shows in America just because you always were put on the tour bus. Mm -hmm. And so like just the journey. Um, I liked, uh, oh, Brazil. Yeah. Chile and Argentina. Mm. People there like punk is like, you know, the, the thing over there. And so it's really weird because they're like so crazy about it and very friendly, very like, especially Chile, Chile uh, Chileans are probably the most friendliest people I've ever met on the planet. Mm like ridiculously friendly if anybody ever has a chance just go to chile honestly <laughs> um yeah uh the uk europe um canada um i, I mean I've, I've traveled with pete outside of those places but not like in, in the sense of tours yeah, just yeah like, sure how yeah. does it um Okay, so before you met, you knew who you obviously you start talking and you know when you first the first conversation, right, that you have, let's say it's like you said maybe you met online or 
Was it the first conversation online? Yeah. Did you know who he was then? Or are you just talking to a guy? Um, I always assumed that he was just like some, like, you know how it is online, right? Yeah. Um, Especially back, back in the day. Back in the day without yeah. the boot ticks. Yeah. Uh, but people who actually worked on the site and who knew P and worked with the band would be like, yeah, that's actually him. So I, uh, but at that point I knew that it was actually him. Right. Uh, the stuff that we actually really bonded over with, again, because he is that guy who loves TV and I grew up with TV, <laughs> TV shows and movies. And that's kind of always been our lives. Like, you know, people don't understand why I go up on stage and talk about movies, especially like Jurassic Park. That was like the last films I watched with them because like, yeah. And people don't understand why I have such a love for tv and film and that's because like it's such a comfort it's like my baby you know it's it's been through me through the hardest times in my life and continues to still be there it's like the one consistency consistency in my life so i'm very fond of it and pete was this kind of the same person so that's kind of our like first conversation was literally that that's what you connected over that's close to you and then now you guys had then developed uh, your own shared memories from watching tv and watching movies together exactly (laughs) yeah was it how did it go i mean you, you had known him personally for so many years at this stage and you know who he is as a person and who he is intimately on the inside. Mm-hmm. How is it then when you, you travel on this tour bus and we're going around the world and seeing the relationship, all these people, they have a different relationship yeah. with him. That's, you know, they feel close, but in a different way to you do, obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, it's it was very interesting to see him kind of work. He was kind of like, he's, like, he's kind of like an airy man. If that makes sense, he could start a com- like if somebody wanted to talk about whatever, he would just be mm. right on the ball and talk about that. He would mm. be very attentive. He would listen. He could literally pick any subject and just be into it. Um, and it was very interesting to watch. Like for me, sometimes I just get so exhausted with, with just socializing. <laughs> but for him, it was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm cool with it. <laughs> mm. So I was like, okay, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, Is he more of a like a naturally extroverted sort of person? I wouldn't say he was extroverted because at home and stuff, he's such a quiet person. He doesn't he doesn't go out or anything like that. But like, he he could just like it was just easy for him to be in a room full of people. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, you can turn it on. You've got that star quality in exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whereas for me, um, I mean, I can talk to people as well, but it's it's I'm not really the kind of person to start anything. <laughs> mm. So yeah, uh, like you know, sometimes you meet people and you just have that aura where they just can calm you and relax you, and you you feel like you've been talking to a friend that you've known for for years. He's kind of like that person. Mm. So. Yeah, people really enjoyed him as well, like just to be around him and talk to him because he wasn't like, he wasn't somebody who was like, I'm a rock star, look at me. He was he was so down to earth, like I don't really care. <laughs> so I'm kind of the same, like I just, I don't care. <laughs> it, 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 it's such an uh, interesting connection that you then have to the history of punk. I forget we were talking about the history of punk for some reason and, and, uh, and then I understood like you've just got this completely unique so, yeah, because despite of your age, mm. one might look at you and and think, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, I'm twenty person? years old. No, yeah, exactly, <laughs> Jacob. You're twenty years old, Jacob. What the fuck? <laughs> but you have this completely unique insight to what is a hugely influential form of music and art. Yeah, and it would, you know, in its way, it influenced me as well. And you know, one of the the people who who made that there, and you sort of had this really interesting. You weren't there, but it was almost like you were there. there. Yeah. yeah. No, I was. Mm. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just a ghost. You couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, but uh, I will definitely say that I'll miss the touring. That was uh, before Pete passed away, there was a potential to do another North American tour. Mm. 
And I was like, yeah, you got to say yes to me. Because yes. I love being on the tour bus. I love touring. I, I love that stuff. Like, that was my favorite. Yeah. So uh, not so much with Pete because, you know, over the years, like, he liked going and doing and performing, but it was like the aspect of all of it was exhausting. For me, I'm like, yeah, seeing the world. <laughs> so. Sure, after doing it. I mean, was it exhausting just because you've done it so many times? Or? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like yeah, it's okay. it's the like the aspect of travel is exhausting, and I understand that. I don't like uh, going through the airports. Mm -hmm. I like being in places, but I don't like airports. Yeah, especially <laughs> not these days. <laughs> yeah, for um, I don't. I'm not. I, I'm not trying to ask too many personal details here. Okay. So feel free to answer this in a, a general sense. But I'm trying to get talking about the music industry now, mm -hmm. right? Not specific, but in general. Um, so let's, because we all think musicians are super rich. And we all think, <laughs> right, right, right. We go, you're this rock star. You've done all these things. Every, mo <laughs> every motherfucker has your album, you know, like. Well, that's what? the problem. Once you have the album, you're not going to buy it anymore. Don't do it again. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So let's let's take an influential figure like Pete, right? Okay. You know, notwithstanding the touring that he was doing right now, mm -hmm. from the body of work that he has, influential, mm -hmm. uh, chipped into the stones of time, that this is something that people are going to be remembering. He's They've put out this body of work. You know, what? Is there a lot still coming from that? I mean, people, it's the royalties. It's the things that are coming. You know, is that, is that a thing? Um, it's, it's, it's decent. It's not like, uh, let's say, Rolling Stones or whatever. Mm. I Maybe mean, they're still on tour as well. So, you know, what the fuck? Yeah, like, uh, like people don't understand that it's... I think people have this idea that like, oh, yeah, you're rich and famous and blah, blah, blah. But it's oh. not. It's still... Like, I worry. You know, I, I still worry about when the income will stop, hmm. right? Um, because it's one of those things where you kind of constantly have to promote as well. And part of the promoting is touring. Hmm. And when you can't do that, hmm. so it's, yeah. It's not a, what to say, a trickle of gold until the end of days. Like even all Precisely. artists okay, yeah. need to keep it going need mm. to keep and that's well there's i mean what a it's quite sad but it's true it's sad and what a vivid lesson about the world of art yeah right there if you're a creative person it's yeah. like capitalism is just not built for you yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have to keep going and yeah. that's because that's a i think I've, I've mentioned this on the podcast before a conversation that i had with my father or rather an email exchange in one of i dare say our more heated moments which was he wrote this email and he's like, you have no retirement fund. Mm. What are you doing with yourself? Like, where are you going to, what are you going to do? Mm. And I wrote a very lengthy reply telling him that I agree. Okay, no, I don't have a retirement fund because I could never buy into the idea. Australians put away up to 10% of their income for their mm. retirement. Part of, well, what is making Australia very strong right now is we all have huge amounts of savings. Mm. But the question is now actually being started 20 years later since this program is being, our pension fund is being floated. Is like, why are we putting away so much? Like Australians are retiring so rich. Like what about, why are we living off potatoes today to do that? Mm. So however, Australia is um, obsessed their retirement fund mm. so my father because he has been adding to this retirement fund for many years what are you going to retire on because mm. the australian idea is that if you don't put away 10 percent of your income for the rest of your life you're going to die eating cat food alone in you know some terrible <laughs> apartment the government's going to look after you that's the fear that mm. drives this so what are you what are you going to do you know how are you going to do that and my answer to him was that I do this way of life because I have no other choice. Mm. There is nothing else I can do. Mm. Now, okay, I run a business as well. Yes, I'm not purely an artist. I do like these corona days because I have the time to just be an artist. Mm. I can just do fucking five podcasts a week and mm. still get by. I have great employees who are looking after some stuff. I can help them and then just do this. Mm. Um. But I don't have a retirement fund because I don't have a choice. I have to do it. I have to keep going. I have to keep making stuff mm. to feel. It's the, it's the thing that makes me feel good. 
I tried. I have a master's degree in computer science. I worked as a consultant for a whole bunch of years. I tried that. It didn't fill me up. Mm. It didn't inspire me in the same way that sitting here with you in a fucking crocodile onesie with two cameras focused on us makes me feel. <laughs> and so then will you say like, well, okay, okay, you've got to be an artist and you've got to keep doing that. But still, the question's begged, what are you going to do about your retirement? And I put it to my father that I won't retire in the same way that he retires. Mm. So he's got a job. It's a very good job. Reasonable money. All fine. They live comfortable. He's put the money away. Now I stop the job. I'm retired. He goes to the garden. They go on. They come back from New Zealand. They got a car, a caravan. It's great. You know. I, I just like this premises of like Australians. Where do we go for our holiday? Yeah, New, Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> it's fucking the only place we can go. It's that or Indonesia. Great. Um. So, but I will never retire because mm. what. I do, I have to do. Mm. Like, I don't want to retire. Yeah. You know what? I would agree with you to a certain extent, extent that mm. I I also think that, like, you can slow down in your old age. Yeah. Now, there's a balance, right? We're not yeah. saying we want to live week to week I, I, exactly. till we're fucking 80. And we're not saying we want to have five podcasts a week to a lady. But there's some balance in there. Exactly. And for me, like, I have this mentality where if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. Mm. <laughs> maybe it's not a healthy mentality i don't know but i've never really taken myself seriously i've always enjoyed having a laugh that's why april fools is literally my mm. wedding anniversary oh it is yes oh my small coincidences that i didn't realize uh because me and pete we both were that kind of people we we did things not because we had to it was because we wanted to and it was fun for us and you know, I'm doing comedy because that's always something I wanted to do. I write a lot of comedic stories. I, you know, for me, this is the fun stuff. Um, I've always wanted to work in TV and film. That's why I have to go to audiovisual. <laughs> well, I've always, always wanted to do like uh, cartoons, but like with my muscle weakness and stuff, like I, I feel like I'm not going to be able to do that. So it's like, what else can I do? And so I'm just exploring all my options. And it, when I'm having fun, I'm happy, right? I, and, and I don't really, like, I know I'm just going to end up working with visuals and storytelling. That's basically who I am as a person. Um, and it's not going to be, it's going to be a very intense work. And it's not probably going to pay a lot because the creative industry. Um, but I know that I'll probably be happier. Mm. So like I, like I said, I can't do formal settings. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that concept has come easier to you mm. because I mean, I had to beat my head against the wall for 10 fucking years to get a degree, keep trying. I've worked as a high price consultant in Sweden, like, you know, before I got it through my thick fucking skull, or you might even say got the Australian programming out of me mm. that, all this isn't, you know, like, don't, what are you doing this? Where it seems that at least though, as a concept that came easier to you because like you said, you're know, kind of your general personality. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm just really not, I've kind of always been that person who just floats in this world. Mm. <laughs> I just go wherever the wind <laughs> blows me like, okay, hello. <laughs> so um, where did, um, where did you and Pete go on a honeymoon? Prague. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he really loved Prague and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um yeah. Okay. So the um uh, like you, you said, you're, you're the kind that will bring the weirdo back from the forest and it, it doesn't register yeah. or it's no factor mm. to you. Mm. So the, the age gap, I mean, you can say it's no factor, but there are still realistic ways that things get Im impacted. I mean, just his life experience and who he is. Mm. Um, you know, w were there difficulties along the way? I think so. I think there still is to this day. Um, How so to this day? I think it's just because like people, 
I think people have this assumption that when you're young, you don't know who you are, mm. which is frustrating. I, like, I know who I am. <laughs> I know exactly who I am, and I'm very happy with myself. Um, and I think the... I tell you what it is. Because mm. this has happened a couple of times now. Not only is it my age, but the fact that I'm Estonian, where a People assume like I'm the trophy wife mm. and they don't necessarily know that I'm in the process of transitioning. So like, I guess the trophy partner or whatever. <laughs> and that's very insulting. Yeah. Like I've had, uh, in November I was in, uh, Lee and I had one guy who literally asked one of Pete's family members if I spoke English. Wow. And that's very insulting. Like, no, I just, I just sat and grunted to him. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> like, and pointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, the whole concept of being, I'm a trophy wife that's transitioning. Okay, I don't think you're a blonde bimbo, all right, at this stage. Yeah. If we're talking about that sort of stuff. But okay, that person doesn't know. And yeah. And even, uh, oh, Christ. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah, I, okay. yeah. It's just very insulting. Um, you know, it's it demeans me as a person. Like, I'm not seen as a fully functioning person with my own thoughts, feelings, and so forth. You know, I'm like an extension to this person, and that's just, yeah, it's insulting. <laughs> um, and it's hard, because, like, how do you explain it to that person? Like, what you just said, like, even though you didn't mean to be offensive, is really fucking offensive. Yeah. But then how can you? I mean, how can you... This thing that you and your husband shared, like any couple share, is a yeah. special thing. Who can who can fucking explain the nature of their marriage? Any two people can explain it, but somehow, because your husband uh, is a well known person, yeah, then somehow you owe this justification to the yeah, world. like I'm just negated, yeah. And then, like the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, well, he's the trophy partner because <laughs> he's got the su successful career. He's the one who's like. He he got an honorary doctorate. I married a fucking doctor for crying. <laughs> so he's the trophy, not me. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how it, it's, it should fucking work. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's that's so yeah, you, I still get that. And yeah, I understand that people, I think that they have this idea that it's like, oh, well, he's an older man and so on. But like I said, I've, I know who I am. I know the people that I like. Mm. The people I like tend to be older anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a thing for old people. I don't know. <laughs> um, so it's it's just you know you don't know me. It's yeah. basically like don't don't judge every single person by like the standards of society. You know that kind of thing or whatever. Because like in society we tend to have this whole aspect of like you know older celebrity and then younger mm. partner and that's like seen as like manipulative and so forth and it's like okay you can't put everybody in the same fucking boat how was it for pete at the time i mean he's got to deal with the same thing i don't think he cared <laughs> yeah, okay. um and i try also like okay i gotta just whatever put it aside of me but mm. people like even now is like uh, it's the point where you're like transitioning and because you're celeb celebrity adjacent uh you know people will judge you mm. right even more so now because of the transitioning part and um and people will think all sorts of shit about you uh again you don't know me yeah. <laughs> uh and that's just like that's just bullshit you gotta fucking bat away and just fucking do your thing comes with the job okay. yeah it comes yeah. with did it like in the early days of your relationship did any of this sink in that it was going to be like this or no. you're just a happy person doing I was thing? just a happy yeah. person doing yeah. my thing like <laughs> I, it, it really did not occur to me yeah, I, bet, I bet of course yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah oh, it's a fascinating story <laughs> I love it. It's so nice that you, you did that, like that you exactly for all those reasons that people will be like, ooh, what? Or they, they don't think that's for whatever they think and mm. that could still happen. And that's mm. still, uh, are you still close to his family? Yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah. In fact, um, a couple of days ago, I was speaking to, I, would, I guess, like third cousin. Mm. Yeah, it was her birthday. So I was just like, hey, how are you dealing with... Because she's in the UK and they're in lockdown. So I was mm, like, how are okay. you dealing with this situation? Sure. Yeah. So... Oh. I mean, what a wild nine years, you know, the time, sorry, not nine years, but that, that time to, to be together and mm. to, to spend the, that. Um, yeah, it almost feels like it was a dream because mm-hmm. now you're like in this situation, you know, you, you there's like all these little um, stuff left behind from him, but like you don't, it's, it's just so weird, especially in a public format because yeah. everybody knows him and you're like, how do you know my husband? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay so it's 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 even more weird to be in that kind of position and to do it publicly yeah like that yeah that's why i just don't care like i you know we were me and my friends are talking about the concept of being a celebrity and i'm like i just don't care yeah. <laughs> i literally do not care well, welcome to the country where we have no celebrity so it's great exactly <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 Um, okay. <laughs> no, that's good. I'm not, I'm not often one for, for taking longer thought pauses in my podcast, but mm. I like this today. I like Okay. That. No. It's all right. I'm trying to not be scared of them. And, uh, cause you, you know me, I'm like, ah, ah, uh, <laughs> you gotta fill the time. Fill oh, the time. No. <laughs> oh, like me, when Silla Kadri and I did that live last Friday, I mean, knowing that the people are turned on, like turned on. You <laughs> 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 were. <laughs> I should watch this uh, video. Yeah, no, <laughs> the people are watching. Uh, oh boy. Made me like very like got to talk, got to talk, got to keep going, got to keep going. And um, after that experience, I deliberately spent all weekend watching Twitch streams mm. to just get it through the idea that. Uh, you don't stream, have to fill the time. Yeah, it's yeah. not TV. Yeah. No, just you know, when you play this back when I'm doing that Garth thing, you will laugh and be like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Even I <laughs> that's, that's what that was. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Uh, yeah, I in my podcast, that's why I, I don't really talk about myself. I just write stories and they're all stupid stories. Yeah, what, is your, what is your podcast? Tell us about the podcast. Uh, you know what? Okay, so my podcast is called When Tigers Used to Smoke and it's used and not used. <laughs> um, and it's just storytelling. And I write stories and I tell them on my podcast it's on Spotify and it's on Apple Podcasts as well. I do Podbean as well, mm-hmm. like you recommended. And uh, I actually I was writing a story. This was based on a conversation with two of my friends, separate times, about Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote a whole fucking piece and I submitted <laughs> it to the New Yorker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I haven't heard back from them because it's about <laughs> Billy Bob's dick. <laughs> And I'm like, I have to like really tell them that this is for comedic effect. Because like, you know, sometimes when people don't know who you are and you're like, oh, in my head, this is really hilarious. Oh. And for other people, like, are you having mental breakdown? <laughs> and I'm like, this might be one of those situations where they'll read it and be like, are you having a mental breakdown? <laughs> um, so I submitted it. I haven't heard anything back from them. Um and I'm debating whether or not I should go somewhere else and just submit other stuff to other people. But wow. I don't know. Like, again, I have to, like, disclaimer, you know, it's well, Maybe it's someone will get it. I mean. I don't know. Like, <laughs> so, you yeah. want to, so you're trying to be a writer like that as well? Like yeah. Stuff. Like, well, even when Pete was alive, I used to write a lot of scripts. Mm. Um, and I love writing scripts. Like, like movies or shows or what? Cartoons? Comedy. Comedy, okay. Yeah, I love writing comedic scripts. I was actually asking uh, Fred Armisen about, uh, you know, how do you become a writer for SNL, right? Because I'm sure they're always looking and this is, this is, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because like, yeah, I love writing dumb shit, yeah. right? And like sometimes when you're on stage, you can't really do the dumb shit, right? It's stand up. It's not like, okay, here's my... I mean, I tried that with the ads, and mm. it, it semi worked. Um, you got to find. I mean, it's about finding the correct medium. Yeah. Um, and I, 
I, I mean all respect and I love it. And I think that's why, like, like Sila Kaji was a good stand-up, mm. but she's a great podcaster. Mm. Like, there's a format, you know, there's a place, you know, she'll always be able to do, she's talented, she'll be able to do things in many different mm. fields and apply that. She writes great articles, great mm. movie articles as well. But they'll, you know, finding that, format that fits you mm. exactly take some time as an artist yeah and for me i realized that my talents are really much in tv and film because like mm. i said i grew up with that like i didn't have parents i had the tv tv and movies are my parents yeah um and so for me that's why when i'm writing i'm writing very like you know tv oriented stuff like even for the stupid ads you know like that was Sorry, my stomach is growling. Ignore that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I love doing that stuff. Uh, I start, I, I try to write like stand up, but then I'm like, uh, on the it's episode, hard. On the it's episode hard. where I talked with, with Roger recently, we talked a little bit about the medium that you use mm. and that we you that when you've got artistic talent and when you're good at something, you know, you're a comedian, you're good at the comedy. There can just sort of be this <laughs> feeling like, well, why aren't you doing that? Like, I think the example we gave was like, well, okay, we're a bunch of talented artists who have some level of writing and can do that. Why aren't we writing a script? Why aren't we making a TV show? Mm. Why aren't we doing something else? And I put it to Roger that, yes, we are perfectly capable mm. of doing all of those things. It's mm. not a lack of talent or a lack of ability or skill in that area it's about where you fit and what your passion is what actually is is you know me and roger and, and ari and it's under we love stand-up mm. that's what drives us that's exactly. what gets us you know going in the morning so of course that's what we now if for some reason we had to sit down and the gun was at our head or heaven forbid there was a <laughs> worldwide virus that was stopping us to stand up and we had to find some other medium to express ourselves. Maybe then we might get into something else. Yeah. But it's, you still have to go with just what excites you. And that's what I, I it sounds mm. like you've done at many stages throughout your life is mm. you've just got to go with what's that good feeling. Exactly. Do what's, what's fun. Yeah. yeah. Even though you have talent possibly in, Many different areas. Yeah, absolutely. You you can definitely have talent in many different. Like uh, like I said, I'm coming from visual arts to uh, writing and comedy and what have you. So we don't. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to name drop, but Fred was a, a originally a friend of your your husband's. Or? Yeah, he's a massive Buzzcocks fan. He's yeah, a sure. massive punk fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he was actually married. He uh, his ex wife was Sally Timms, and she did an album with Pete. Huh. Yeah, she's very nice as well. Okay, yeah, so they had that connection yeah, through the music. Yeah. They kind of met and formed a friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was we met in Coachella. Um, huh. There's a story behind this. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Oh, <laughs> we crashed into his car. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy, Freddy. <laughs> so yeah, we we were going to Coachella. So Buzzcox was this was 2012. Um, I also met Roseanne Arquette, and she's huh. a very lovely, nice person. Um, yeah, so it was our friend Joey was driving us, <laughs> and he crashed into uh, Fred's car because he was in front of us. And then Joey got out to deal with it, and then Fred got out, and I got excited because I, you know, I watched SNL. Pete wasn't at the Did time. Did you already? Was there? Were they friends already or not? No, no, no. Because no, so you don't know, right? They don't know. And I was like, oh my god, Pete, that's. That's Fred Armisen from SNL. Like, I was like so excited. He's like, I don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and Danny with us, the drummer, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna go out and just like, he goes out. He's kind of like Danny is a good guy, you know. He he also is kind of like trying to defuse everything, you know, using comedy as a means to cope and survival kind of thing. So he goes over and, and he says to Fred, oh, like I don't want to alarm you, but you just hit you know pete from buscox and then fred's like oh my god i'm literally going to see you right now <laughs> uh, so i like to joke like yeah we like we were thinking that we would just come to him instead um that's great and so it turns out he was a massive fan and we got there and 
uh joey and fred i'm sure they dealt with it i don't know what happened but i'm I'm gonna assume they dealt with it uh yeah and then coachella was really fucking weird man and so the buzzcocks were playing at coachella yeah Yeah. it was really weird and And what I yeah. mean, besides the obvious of why is it weird, is there something specific about why it was weird? I didn't really like it. <laughs> the whole event of Coachella. Yeah, because like the people who were in charge of us were like, te- <laughs> I want to say teenagers, nah. but maybe they were older, but they were like drunk and high and okay. they had to like go on these freaking golf carts, but they were like not driving safely and I didn't like that. And then it was kind of weird. And then I accidentally met Roseanne Arquette. Then you're wondering, like, how do you accidentally meet someone? You don't know who that person is. No. You get excited. You start talking to them because they have a camera. <laughs> 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 and then literally everyone I knew, and there's a photo of me and <laughs> Roseanne Arquette because my friend took it. And she's like, do you know who that is? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I just a really nice lady. And she's got a brand new camera. And um, she was having some difficulty. And I'm an amateur photographer. Uh, I love, like, yeah, I have two Leicas at home and everything. Like, I'm fucking crazy about taking photos as well. So I saw that she was kind of having, like, some difficulty. And I thought, I'm going to be helpful and just, you know, say, hey, like, you know, do you want some help or whatever? And she was a really nice person. Mm. And then everybody's like, you know who that is? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny. I don't know if she'll ever remember me, like, that weird person from Coachella. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> was there many festivals that you went around to? Or was it mainly... Were the Buzzcocks mainly doing their own gigs? Um, there were quite a handful of festivals, yeah. Oh. Um, uh, lots of UK ones, I guess. Mm, okay. Yeah. Was there the fan base always a bit stronger in the UK? I mean... Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. you could say that. I mean, so was America. Yeah. Um, but with, like, with Coachella, it was kind of difficult because the guy who puts on the show, he's actually a massive fan of the solo, the Picelli solo stuff. Sorry, my stomach's wrong. What time is it? It's not even, like, probably time. No, it's, like, three o'clock. When is your, when is your eating time? Normally four, but today, because it's a special occasion, my friend's coming over and we're gonna order some fancy food. (laughs) Be bougie. Get some bolt, yeah. Get some <laughs> bolt. Get some Uber Eats. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna probably watch movies. Nice. Um, so, <laughs> like I always watch movies now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, shit, what was I gonna talk about? Yeah, so the guy, he's a massive like Pete Shelley solo album fan. Yeah. So right. they're like, okay, we'll agree to do like Homo Sapien from his first album. Uh, and that's how they got the whole band to go on the stage and play, perform Coachella and stuff. So yeah, huh. yeah, it was it was just weird. It was such a like a uh, what's the word here? It was like full of weird, annoying Californian people, yeah. <laughs> and then like the weird odd mix of celebrity. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. Huh. There must be such a, like you referred to it earlier as a dream. I mean, what a juxtaposition. Yeah. And now it's here, you know, here we are, coronavirus time in Estonia <laughs> compared to that, that life. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I've, I've had a fucking life, I tell you. Like I'm waiting, um, I'm already waiting for fucking retirement. Like when do I get to retire? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. I don't know. I feel like. Probably, I want to say from a year, but like three years from now, I'll probably have some other crazy yeah. bad shit thing going on with my life. And I'm like, yeah, this is my life. This is who I am. That's and, great. Yeah. Just do it. Fuck it. Yeah. Go with it. Yeah. Whenever. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I like, um, I, I like the change. I like, um, I like that we're in these days right now where we're not being told what's your five-year plan what's your 10-year plan oh god have you got the, you got the i can't think like that i really know, yeah, can't right and I, I i i still feel i guess from my programming that i spoke about the australian programming mm. i still feel that you know i gotta mm. have things set and to keep going but when i started to see the rest of the life played out i was like oh, this is fucking boring like, yeah this is this is not giving it to me right you want excitement like you yeah. don't 
you don't want to know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. You know what I mean? You want the element. Do, no, yeah. I want the element of motherfucking surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some asshole going to, you know, jump out of the, out of nowhere going surprise. Yeah. And like, I want that. I want that <laughs> in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I agree. Like I, I mean, there are things I look forward to in the future, mm. but I can't think about having like a, a sort of regular setting. It's very difficult for me. I'm very restless. Yeah. Um, I even had to, when I was starting out doing stand up, I had to sort of teach myself to stay still because I can't even stay <laughs> still. Like I literally cannot. And I probably still don't get it right, but I just, I can't. So. But you said that. Um... You know, we want what uh, come what may, anything. Let, let's have the randomness happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but how does that, how does that life philosophy tie into the anxiety that you feel? Because that's like, oh, anything could happen tomorrow. I mean, kind of. I, like, that's why I want you to exp- kind of explain because talking to you, I kind of get it. I just get a vibe of like, I don't know. I see how it works, but I haven't. <laughs> put it into words uh no it's not so much what you fear what will happen today or tomorrow it's the fear of what will happen years from now so you have to configure some sort of plan like my plan is basically to go to back to university get a degree you know then i can be hireable <laughs> apparently you want to be hireable? Well, balancing spoons on your face is not <laughs> a good skill to have in the workplace. I don't know why. So I haven't checked CV Keskus lately, but apparently it's not. Okay. <laughs> also, you know how like on the CV you write the objective? Yeah. I literally wrote, I don't need Jeff Goldblum. I'm my own Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> And my, yeah. and my friends insisted that I should just leave that on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like you want to be employable. That's the thing. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. Like you're looking for a future where someone gives you a job, like in a job job, not a like, oh, I'm a filmmaker and someone's giving me a job, which is to make this film job. You know, I always joke that I'm going to end up working in pornography, but I suspect I'm going to end up working in pornography. Yeah, sure. Talk to Tim. Yeah. He's got experience in the area. Oh, really? Have okay. you talked to him? No. Talk to Tim. Okay, great. Talk to Tim. Great. Just, yeah, I will. I'm not giving him too much away. No, you, you know, I, I, I really don't care. Like, that's the thing. Audio visual. Everybody needs that, right? Because we yeah. are living in this in- industry where, yeah, like even in porn, you need that. So I don't mind working in pornography. I really don't. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I would like. I mean, my one of the jobs, few jobs that I've had was librarian. Surprisingly, it's very fulfilling job. Where were you a librarian? Uh, in the high school. Cool. Yeah, and it's great because kids say s- such fucking stupid shit, uh, and you're just eavesdropping all the time. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this? What a stupid kid! <laughs> you don't, you don't say that out loud. But. It says something about your mental age, and we've, <laughs> as a common topic in this talk, because you're like, even at high school, you're like these fucking kids around me. Like, you're the kid, and these fucking up stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I, I was literally writing about uh, the movie Citizen Ruth because it was a movie I first saw in high school. In like a politics class, because this is about like you know pro choice and pro life, and I vaguely remember that scene where Laura Dern's character Ruth punches the kid because he's because she's uh, playing the the mother soon to the soon to be mother who's pregnant but she's like a junkie and she's huffing paint, mm. and the one of the kid like um, this family basically adopts this Christian family adopts her and they want her to save the baby and they're trying to make sure she's not doing you know substance. And uh, their son, the little boy, he's he finds Ruth and she's huffing paint and she's like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. And she punches him in the gut. I'm like, like to me, that's what I remember. And I'm like, yeah, I'll punch that fucking narc. You know, like one <laughs> of these fucking kids going to learn. And then as an adult, I watch it again and I'm like, still, still trying to figure out what the fuck am I supposed to take away from that movie as an adult? And I'm like, don't be a fucking narc. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I'm literally that kind of dumb person. Like I, okay. To be fair to me, I enjoy being an idiot, right? I love being a himbo, an absolute <laughs> fucking himbo. Um, 
it's just the playfulness of it, you know? I like, that's why, yeah, like, I always say, like, I like kids. I'm just not in love with them. Um, yeah, and in the library, it's satisfying because, you know, you're surrounded by knowledge, but also the storytelling aspect. And then fucking dumbass kids who are just so fucking dumb. <laughs> you're like, you're an idiot. I love this. <laughs> so... I don't know. It's like the perfect combination. Um, and it's such a satisfying job. But um, now it's like, obviously, when you're creative, it's hard to be employed and stuff like that. So you're trying to find something that you can do hmm. that's agreeable to you. Because um, I'm also, again, restless. So I can't. It's hard to sort of have that kind of nine to five sort of thing. Mm. So, I mean, job, job is structure. And this was what the very start of this podcast. I know. That you're I not know. good with I, the structure. I, I, I don't like formal settings. Like, can you imagine me as a, like, in an office? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. You're okay. Fuck you. <laughs> That's literally me at an office. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm like the male equivalent of Renata Klein. <laughs> uh, oh God, I need to stop calling myself out. Like fuck, call out culture. <laughs> <laughs> call yourself out. I demand I get taken off the air. <laughs> exactly. Where do you get off? <laughs> fuck, fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, well, we're coming up on an hour, an hour 50. Maybe we'll really? start to wrap it up. Yeah. An hour 50? Yeah, one hour 50. That's what, that's what the sound desk says. Maybe it's a bit less. Maybe we started. Hour 40. Let's round it, round it down to. It's good. Yeah, we can, we can edit this. Do you still edit? No. Or no, 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 I don't edit. Because, no. I mean, who's got the time? <laughs> who's got the time? And there's nothing. I mean, unless there's something you want to take it out. Yeah. There's nothing to take out. This is the whole thing. That's why we like. like I mean, particularly with you. I just wanted to just. There's yeah. no rush. Yeah. There's no breaks. We yeah. got all the time in the world to just sit okay. and talk about what the story is. And because it is a detailed story, there's like oh, elements man. to explain, right? Oh, that you can't just do in a uh, article or a, you know, a fucking segment on somebody. I need a fucking book. Like everybody tells yeah. me, you should write a book. You should write a book. Like, do you like writing like that? Like books? Or just scripts? You know, I tried. I, like, in 2019, I ended up accidentally, like, okay, how do you uh, end up accidentally writing something? Uh, well, you do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up writing, like, this dumbass novella that I kind of put aside because I was like, oh, my God, there's so much errors in this. I can't even be ours to edit. Um, and it's about Satan. <laughs> Good. So I was like, okay, I, yeah. And now I have another story that I want to do. It's about a guy. And this is why I was thinking about all these criminal activities mm. and why I'm in this getup. But it's about a guy who he's on Tinder and Bumble and he, his dates uh, only last for one date because he does criminal activities with his dates. And I call it a Florida man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Florida man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Florida man. Yeah. <laughs> Florida okay. man. Now That's I got it. And yeah. it's a crocodile as well. Well, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be alligator, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, we got crocodiles in Australia. Yeah, That's it's the, alligators yeah. in the. I it's didn't actually alligator. see an alligator when I was in Florida. Okay. Yeah. It's just sad. I saw the signs that said, like, danger, alligator. So, and it's, apparently there are signs that says, do not molest the alligators. I just, Dang, I, I really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a real problem, right? <laughs> Really <laughs> real problem <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> welcome to florida <laughs> uh yeah right. well time to yeah time to get some food time to wrap up yeah Still some sunshine there all right well kid thank you thank yeah. you for telling your story is there any other bits that we missed oh my god there's so many <laughs> like literally so many i have yeah. like so many more bits but... i know this is like what I, you know i joke about retirement but <sighs> when do i get to retire yeah. i don't know Let's just end it with how much I love Laura Dern. Let's I love do it, Laura, Laura Dern. Dern. Thank Laura you Dern appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right. Ciao.